All right, hello and welcome. Uh, so I've been doing some playtesting with Loki or Felhar, and uh, I've been trying to sort of find a niche in which he can really shine. And the thing with the Dark Elves, which is like obviously my favorite faction, they have access to so many amazing legendary lords, like arguably the best legendary lords in the game. You've got Malkith, Marathi, Hellebron, and all of these legendary lords can in their element, you know, absolutely dominate a game. Um, and Felhart, I think, you know, compared to these lords, he's not as competitive of a pick. Uh, but the question was, is there maybe a niche engagement in which he does have some value and he can maybe sort of be on the same level as some of these other uh, legendary lords? He is a little bit cheaper, if, if at least if you don't take him on the big dragon mount. So, you know, maybe he, he, he has a spot. The thing that I think makes Loki or Felhart unique, like it's not really his damage, it's not really his healing. I mean, I guess that's okay, if, but that only triggers when you're in combat, which it took me a while to realize. But I think what makes him cool is this uh, Merciless Slayer ability, which is minus four leadership. And you look at that and you're like, well, that's not very much. Uh, but I disagree. It's a 40 meter range. Anything in that range gets minus four leadership and if you pair it with a charybdis don't forget the charybdis also has a leadership debuff and charybdis and, and loker felhart are like you know uh quirky little lovers together so minus eight leadership from the charybdis plus minus four leadership from felhart constant you're going to be at minus 12 leadership for anything in that periphery so against factions with weak leadership that is like a leadership uh, death ball. And if you recognize that the Charybdis also has fear and terror, if, if the units that you're fighting have taken some damage, uh, they're going to be very close to uh, wanting to buckle and break. To add on top of this, the Dark Elves have access to a Death Sorcerer, uh, Sorceress. So what you can do is you can take Doom and Darkness, and that's minus 16 leadership. So, yes, it's going to cost you some Winds of Magic, but if you cast Doom and Darkness, um, you've got minus 16 from there, plus, uh, what is it, minus 4 from Lokir, it's minus 20, plus from the Charybdis is minus 8, that's minus 28 leader. 28 leadership. That is a huge debuff to leadership. And on top of that, the Dark Elves have access to an assassin. So if you need to gank a hero, I mean, the assassin, he has a skill. I don't know if I brought it in this game. Uh, yeah, Black Lotus, minus 16 leadership. So minus 16 leadership plus like another minus 30 leadership. Like if you find a hero and you can get them to like minus if you can get them to around 50 leadership from uh putting a little bit of damage on them then you know one doom and darkness and the assassin in the vicinity and that leader that hero is going to uh run for the hills so very powerful ganking squad uh i have to i i don't remember who the player was that i played against i have to give credit to them for uh you know um, giving me the idea of pairing Lokir Felhart with the Cryptus. Usually the Cryptus is not a, a super competitive pick in my opinion, but uh, the nice thing about the Cryptus is it enables Lokir to go on foot and not get pushed around by larger, you know, lords on a dragon mount and things like that. So uh, I think the best matchup to probably bring Lokir Felhart would be against like... Uh, like maybe a Skaven or like an artillery heavy faction with not a lot of mobility where you can just take the Cryptus, take Lokir Felhart, take your Assassin, plow right into the front line, and then, uh, you know, debuff the leadership of everything that is anywhere close to that, that center pocket. Um, so this is a, that's enough uh, analysis there. Let's take a look at this battle, just sort of a, a quick play test. I, I, I did it a couple different times against different uh, factions, but this one is like, I won't, I won't say it's the best game that we ever played, but it was a fun one. So in the back, um, you know, typical zombie pirate, deckhand mob spam from the Vamp Coast player. He's got five units in total, six units, five units plus a death guard. So there's a lot of anti-large power there with some cannons. Uh, I think it was 
maybe the player didn't check the map before uh, he selected his army because there's so much forest here. Like, he's not going to get any use out of those cannons. So I think the army comp was really not optimal for this map. Uh, high elves, same thing. They got a couple uh, Eagle Claw bull throwers, but this is not really the best map for them. It's a very short distance for them to shoot. Like, if you look, he's got basically here to here, and that's about it. So um, with deploying in the woods, it was easy for me to push uh, straight in there. Uh, we've got uh, Norskin player over here, pretty standard Marauder Berserkers. Those are going to be great against um, Vampire Coast, so very happy to have those on my team. And I believe this was MR Defender playing the uh, the Dwarf, as he tends to do. And nothing too crazy. He's got a bit of cannons for counter artillery. Um, but again, I don't know how much use he's going to get out of them on this map. But, you know, it never hurts to have a couple Dwarf cannons. Okay. So, battle underway. I'm going to play this pretty fast because this was a long battle. I actually... <laughs> I, I forgot my witch elves over here. I didn't deploy them with the rest of my army. So little mistake by myself right off the back. Um, dwarf player drops uh, runesmith negation so that he can win this artillery duel versus the uh, high elf uh, artillery or at least not get sniped out right away. Players are kind of sizing themselves up right here. Wood elf player, uh, uh, this was Halger. He likes to go very heavy with these super, chevron, super chevroned up eagles um, and then he's got a couple of hawk riders also super chevroned up so that the eagles don't get like surrounded and that can be a very very powerful uh, ganking squad and he does put them to good use right at the start of the game and makes me pay for um, pay for a bit of a sloppy mistake again uh, well I'll show you that when we get there so Bleak Swords are coming up here to take this engagement with the Spearmen. That's a good engagement for them. I am trying to sneak this one unit um, around the back here so I can get into the Eagle Claw Bolt Throwers. So this one unit makes contact. I put the Sorceress of Death in there just to freeze the Spears in place and uh, pull this around so that I can get the Bleak Swords into contact. How there comes beelining straight for my Sorceress. Like he does not waste any time. I do have, like, I mean, it's not like I forgot about her. Like, I have the Assassin right here. I've got Lokir Felhar here. I've got the two Charybdis here. So I didn't leave her, like, completely isolated. But these three great eagles, like, super chevroned up, uh, they have the mass to knock the other troops out of the way. And then they, like, look at this, like, three bites. I have no time to react and, like, basically kill these uh, great eagles. Like, the, the sorceress just straight up tanks. So I was super disappointed to lose my sorceress off right off the bat because like, you know, the whole point of my build was, you know, leadership uh, bomb and without having her minus 16 doom and darkness, like that sort of right off the bat, like takes out the, uh, the, the meat from my, from my entire army strategy. And I, again, I think it, had I not, like I told you, it was a sloppy match. Maybe if I hadn't, deploy these witch elves over here at the very least i could have made him pay for like dropping these what four eagles three eagles four four eagles on my sorceress right away like they wouldn't have been able to escape but because i didn't have them there uh yeah it was really oh that was so painful so i was like okay well i guess we got to win this without a sorceress the good news is her sacrifice wasn't in vain. The Bleak Swords did make contact with the uh, Eagle Claw Bolt Throwers, so I will be able to take those offline pretty quickly. Thanks to the Dwarf player for, you know, not isolating me. Some Dwarf players tend to turtle with their artillery, but uh, MR pushed up with me and helped me, like, really take this, this fight right into the woods. Um, the other nice thing is by being in the woods, like, these Longbeards are getting some screen from the uh, Missile Fire. <clears throat> a couple of mortars, I guess. Uh, I, I criticized them earlier because of all the the, um, the the woods. I guess they are able to fire more or less over the woods because of the high arc, arc of fire. I mean, they won't be helpful when they're in the woods, but at least for now, they're they're bombing in some pretty heavy damage. Oh, that big shot from Queen Bess took out like half a unit of bleak swords in one shot. That was absolutely absolutely brutal. Um, but the bolt throwers are offline. 
There's Fireborn rotated over to his flank, so I'm a bit scared about them. And there's also Hawk Riders provide, providing oversight. But I did bring a couple units of Shades, so I don't think the High, high Elf player noticed that. They're providing counter fire into this high value unit. And with a couple units of Shades, like these guys are down to half health in about two or three volleys. So very nice stuff going on there. Runesmith on the right flank is going to sort of get into a, a I don't know, wet noodle fight, I guess is the correct term, with these uh, zombie pirate deckhand mob. The dwarves can tank that out forever, and those deckhand mob are not going to do much. Uh, on this flank, you know, I'm having a huge fight here with these uh, hawk riders. The dragonborn are basically eliminated now. Charybdis went in to sort of finish them off. And so now the shades can start trading fire with the hawk riders and some of these other um, high value units. Uh, I do try and break off these low X tricksters. They, they gave me a bit more problem than I thought they would have. I thought with the Witch Elves, the Sisters of Seeing Doom, and all this, this this other support, the Charybdis and stuff, I could maybe drop their leadership a bit faster. Uh, so that was not the case. Maybe a, a rear charge would have helped. The High Elf players got, uh, this was Capo, if I recall. He's got Alariel and the Lord Master of Hoeth kind of sneaking into the woods. Drops down a, an early uh, heal onto these um, uh, Keepers of the Flame, just trying to keep their martial prowess up and fighting as long as possible against the Longbeards. Maybe a little bit premature on that one, but, you know, at least those are still alive. And the Fireborn are gone now, so that's probably the second most uh, valuable unit from a high-elf perspective. These um, Night Terrors, Morgles, whatever, the ROR version is coming over to help with this, sort of this infantry blob and just buy a little bit more time for the for the motor to, to do some work. Also lurking in the creepy woods is a Morgul hunter, so uh, he's going to have his moment to shine uh, later on. On the right flank, the Norskin player is coming around to engage with the uh, Vampire Coast. And I think this is the perfect matchup for Norska because Vamp Vampire Coast obviously has, uh, you know, a lot of HP and not very much armor and so those berserkers are going to go absolutely wild on all of those zombies uh, and be able to maybe chop through them uh, you know in time the eagles are disrupting things they're getting into these back lines of uh, log beards of uh, thunderers um, but the left flank is starting to collapse now it's a very very even fight but Lokir Felhart uh, it's taken essentially no damage. The Charybdis is also uh, virtually no damage. Hawk Rioters are fleeing. And the Lorx Tricksters, even with uh, the Storm of Blades, they're not going to hold forever. So finally, I did get my Sorceress back. Fortunately, she rallied, and I, I had managed to hide her in, in the woods over back here. So she didn't even get sniped out. And I dropped that uh, doom and darkness on on the Loix tricksters so so far they're still holding tough with the leadership but uh with the crib that's coming over you'll see if i'm able to break this super defensive unit which normally has very high melee defense okay sorry about that a little pause there my uh my hard drive ran out of space so i had to sp had to restart the video and I'll try and resume from where I left off but basically I was just saying that you know the Charybdis with the Doom and Darkness and Lokir Feller they were able to uh, break off the Loex Tricksters which meant that I was free to ravage into this back line so I Sisters of Avalorn, Spearman all of these juicy targets uh, are now available for me to um, basically pressure out and I, I was licking my chops at the at this point in time the hawk riders are very good for like you know taking out individual targets but they can't you know hold a front line so uh this meant that i was free to start pushing you know directly through uh to engage here and, and eventually make my way down to the vampire coast so around this time in the battle i noticed that lariel the radiance is exposed that's very good news for me, because I happen to bring a, a Dark Elf Assassin. So Assassins are not... Uh, the 
are not super competitive picks. I'm looking for where it went. I don't know. I don't know where the assassin is. He'll be back later on, I guess. Is he in the grind here with Loki? I don't know. Okay, so I don't know where the assassin is. He's probably doing something. The uh, sh shades are coming in to engage these archers with light armor uh, in melee. I only needed to send one unit to break them off. The other three are rotating over here to start shooting at these hawk riders. The hawk riders probably should have hidden in the woods somewhere. They came out, they came out into the middle area. Uh, I guess they were trying to snipe out either Lokir or the Charybdis or maybe that finish off that sorceress. Um, but because I have three units of shades here, I mean, they're not going to be able to last very long with that. And you can chevron up your units all, like as much as you want, but that's only going to benefit leadership, melee attack, and melee defense. So it's not going to give you an additional health pool, uh, which means that uh, super. if you decide to chevron your units up like a lot, you better protect them from missile fire. Uh, so... The high elf players are, are running away. Uh, there's a unit of, I guess, uh, Morngulls over here. They probably forgot. Um, maybe they chased something off the map and then forgot sort of to be re-engaged. So I've got a Charybdis. Charybdis is anti-large. And I have another Charybdis, which is also anti-large. And this is a high value unit. So I was like, you know what? Let's, let's wipe that unit off the map so that I can sort of do what I want with my infantry in peace, and I don't have to worry about them, you know, cutting up the dwarfs or anything like that. Uh, this one thing you'll see Haldir do a lot. He'll bring uh, an ancient tree man, and he'll uh, he'll bring a lot of heals to keep that ancient tree man up. Uh, let's see what he has here. Oh, I'm going to just pause it for a second or slow it down. Please stop moving. My god. Okay, Ancient Tree Man. So regrowth, and it's got 100 armor, uh, which means that, and, and it also has access to Shield of Thorns, plus it's got Missile Resistance and a 20% Physical Resistance. So if you want to, if you think you're going to just tank out this unit, you're going to have a pretty hard time. It also has Earth Blood, so it has access to two heals, 100 armor, um, it's got what is it, a Scroll of Shielding for 22 damage resistance, like it's very very hard to just goon out the ancient tree man if you're going to do it you're going to have to commit a lot of resources to doing it and you're going to have to have certain type of units like uh you know heroes assassins high mass units to be able to do it and or, or cavalry uh and I, the way you know credit to Haldir, i think a lot of players don't like playing against Haldir because they find his builds very frustrating uh and niche but um you know it you can't knock him for it not being effective. Ah, oh, there's there's the assassin. He finally found his way to Alario, just like magic. Um, and with Alario on foot, she has no escape mechanic. Assassin's uh, trophy is popped, and she's going to just bite the dust in no time. In the middle, Wolfric the Wanderer and the Maws of Skin Wolves and everything else are just going off on uh, Count Noctilus. Uh, Vampire Coast is in a lot of trouble. Berserkers cut up the front line, so these anti-large units were uh, able to get on Noctilus. The Hawk Riders come in here. I guess they're trying to help, but this is a, a lost cause at this point. Noctilus is going to drop, and with Noctilus out, that's going to shift the balance bar like hugely in our, our favor. All of this is going to start to crumble. Uh, so that basically wipes a unit off the map, and then... Likewise, with Alarial gone, there's two legendary lords that have just beat the dust. All we have to deal with now is this, you know, cluster of great eagles and an ancient tree man. Uh, so, at this point, feeling pretty good uh, about our chances. Thorgrim, uh, the grudge bearer, is creeping along on his toilet seat. He's ready to uh, end some grudges. So at this point, I think the game is pretty much done. I don't think there's too much more analysis to be said here. The, um, you know, the Charybdis just took care of these Mongol hunters. Um, and then, yeah, here's the, uh, here's kind of the wind down to the, the game here. Assassin makes his way over 
And it's like, okay, epic showdown. The Wood Elves are going to make their last stand here with their eagles and their lovely ancient tree men to keep everything alive. A nice cluster by Haldir to, um, you know, make sure that he gets max value out of his heals on all of his units. The Thorgrim is very low but escapes. Uh, Runesmith also very low, but I think he's able to pop some buffs. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe they're on recharge. But uh, the, the two Charybdis, the Assassin can kind of get in here and not get knocked around too much. Well, yeah, they got knocked around a little bit, but those are going to be really uh, punishing to the Ancient Tree Man, even with um, even with uh, like a lot of uh, physical resistance and and access to heals. Like he's going to have to use a lot of Winds of Magic to keep the Ancient Tree Man up. Uh, you know, Valiant. Valiant effort by these other treemen. Like, they they kind of did their best to deal with the Charybdis, but the Charybdis, you know, when it doesn't get shot up, uh, and it, it is on those types of targets, it can do do some work. So, uh, that was a fun battle. Lokir Felhart, moral of the story, he does maybe have some uh, utility as a lord that can just debuff the hell out of leadership. Thanks, bye.